Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here. Welcome to the Retro Future. I got sent all of the parts to make this metal Game Boy Advance SP. I'm super excited about it. It closes. I'm one of the first people to ever get their hands on it. Let's take a look. Inspirational. So Nick over at Boxy Pixel, link in the description, sent me the kit to build this. Let's go ahead and do that now. So these are the main three parts that they've sent me and they've also included a bunch of screws and buttons and stuff. So we'll take a look at those in just a minute. But these pieces are what we're actually gonna be seeing. And oh my goodness me, are they just fantastic. Anodized black aluminum or aluminium. There's plenty of different colors that are gonna be on their website. And the really fun thing about this mod is there's actually not a great deal of things to do other than just basically replace the shell. One thing I really like is the design of this top piece. It's currently screwed down and this uses little tiny Allen key screws. So not only does it hold this into place and it does it from the back which means that the front is actually screwless and then there's just one really nice adhesive rubber piece that's going to go into this little recess it's so well thought out but what that actually means is this plate is interchangeable which is going to unlock a bunch of different options for customization in the future so that is really damn cool to begin with we'll just need a tri-wing screwdriver bit so i'm going to go ahead and remove the back the next thing is to remove these three screws here. Once those three screws are removed, you then need to very carefully open up the Game Boy and then unlatch this ribbon cable right here. And there we have it. So now it's time to start installing all of the new components, starting off with the screen. So we can just set that down in there like so. The ribbon cable just needs to be very gently sort of rolled like that. And then we can take this back piece and shove that on. I wonder if that's gonna move around in there. Yeah, do you know what? We might need to do something about that. I have this small little foam pad why don't we go ahead and stick that right there? That could be too thick. Probably not because this is also recessed. Now Nick over at Boxy Pixel is someone that I've been making videos with for quite a long time since he started this journey. And uh, he was very kind to send this out to me. And I think I might be one of the first people who sent this out too. We're gonna take this bottom piece and that's where things are really gonna start looking just incredible. So there's a small little hinge cover here. And honestly, how Nick has done this I just do not understand. Like to get the precision of just all of these little tiny fantastic pieces. I mean, how in how on earth is this a real thing? There's um, two sort of little pieces here which are funky shapes. These slot into the side of the Game Boy. So these little pieces go in in a very specific way. But once they're in, they are perfectly flush. And what that's basically gonna do is prevent metal rubbing on metal, which is just such a well thought out idea. Now, obviously that's been more work for him to do, but it's just gonna be totally worth it. He's clearly someone who knows what people like and a nice smooth hinge, which doesn't feel like metal is grinding on metal is a much more desirable outcome. Now it's a good job I'm the retro future because I didn't wanna use these pink hinge covers, but in my spare parts drawer, I've just found this, which is a pack from something, I don't know. There's two black, little hinge covers. We're gonna need those, they're fairly important. Okay, so let's slide them onto the hinges, comme ça. So let's just see how this works. I think you do it whilst it's open. The trick is just to do it whilst it's open like that. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness me. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear, I'm just so excited. Okay, right, let's pop this little piece back on. And that is gonna cover up the ribbon cable and make that far less terrifying. We've got two different choices of buttons. We've got gold or black. I'm gonna have to go for the gold ones because they just feel way more premium. And these, of course, are also made out of metal. Can you see that there are actually designs etched into them or recessed into them? Micro little boxy pixel logos and even the brightness 
Just look at that. Absolutely insane work. Seriously, one of the coolest guys out there when it comes to the modding scene and also just generally. And I love the fact that it uses a lot of the original parts of the Game Boy, things like the, uh, the button membranes and the speaker, you know, just to keep that authenticity. Now, you could use your old plastic buttons if you don't like the feel of the metal ones. You know, that would be, that would be completely fair enough. So now we're gonna place the shoulder buttons in, which are also using the original ones. And just to show the level of this design right here, the quality of it, it's even got a tiny little cutout so that the spring can be locked into place. It's time, I think, to put the Game Boy inside. This is just unbelievably exciting. And then we can lower the motherboard down so let's screw the motherboard into place. This actually only requires two screws. One is gonna go just here like that. And these are screws that are included with the Game Boy. So make sure you follow the instructions that are included with this and only use the ones that he has actually made for this Game Boy. Let's pop in the power switch and then we can take the back shell piece and lower it into place what we're gonna do is install the screws into the back of the Game Boy. These are using the little sort of hex screws again, of which one of them I have lost, which is slightly concerning because I believe we need that screw right now. So now we can take the battery and that can go straight into the Game Boy like that and that fits in just there like so. It's really easy to replace if you ever need to. And then we can set the back down and this tiny little screw is gonna finish basically the entire thing off. Obviously I need to go and find that hex screw in a second. And then one little thing we're gonna do, although this is of quite a moment, so let's look at it. Oh my goodness me. Does it actually work? Let's, let's find out, no. No, it doesn't. Fake AliExpress Game Boy to the rescue. Is it the battery that's the problem? Let's find out. <gasps> Why is the... Okay, we're, we're discovering a few problems here. I'm assuming maybe I needed to solder a wire. Okay, so let's solder this wire into place. It is actually quite simple. This is still a solderless mod. You don't actually have to use this screen and you could use an AGS-101 screen or even an AGS-001 screen if you wanted that front lightness. So that wire then has to go to this pad right here, Q28 or something like that, Q128. Let me go ahead and sit this ribbon cable back in. I'll close it all back up again and we can test it. Okay, there we go. The brightness is now working. That's what we wanted. Okay, so I'm gonna just close this all up and we'll take a look at it when it's finished. So if there's one thing we can all agree, it's that anodized black is the worst color to try and film. <laughs> That's why I had to reshoot everything because it just didn't work on camera. But in person, it is just sleek. And wow, I mean, just take a look at it. It's like industrial met with Apple. And then Iron Man had a bit of inspiration and then Batman was just like, make it all black. And then yeah, we've come out with this and it's absolutely gorgeous. I seriously cannot believe how stunning it looks. The screen that is in it is absolutely stunning. It's got this brightness uh, button, which obviously is in the normal place, but there's 15 different brightnesses. And also if you hold it, you get a little menu which pops up. And if you hold the button, you can go down to pixel effects and then you can change the different pixel effects. So there's lots of different ones to choose from so that you can have sort of like scan lines and pixels and all the rest of it. I think the metal buttons don't feel bad at all. It's a little bit metal on metally, but you know what? I'm not complaining about that. That's what this is, it's a metal Game Boy. The one complaint I do have is that the shoulder button over here doesn't press down as well as this one does. That could be because I've used an aftermarket shoulder button, so maybe 
the uh, we, we need to get that checked out. Nick, I'm sure he'll he'll look at it and try a few different ones. I would say this little piece here doesn't have the best finish on it. Uh, and also, I'm not sure I'm overly fond of seeing the ribbon cable in this little crevice here. This, I'm sure, is a prototype and a first one. So I'm sure he's going to take all this feedback on board and make some changes. But there we have it. The only thing left to do is plug in a classic Game Boy Advance game, the NES Classic. And I also love how the label is out on display. I feel like that just looks so cool. I mean, the colors on that screen just look a bit too good. Seriously, though, I mean, yeah. This is, this is just what get retro gaming is all about. And this is what the retro future is about. This is literally the future of retro right here. We can replay it, all our favorite games, but just in, in, in a better way than we ever remember them. That is the retro future if I've ever seen it, other than looking in the mirror. Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Thank you to Nick over at BoxyPixel for sending me this. And thank you for all of you for subscribing, which I'm sure you have done. Thanks for watching, goodbye.